I've worked in small machine shops and I've worked in giant shops. And when it comes to hole making, they all have one thing in common. And that is you have to know how to bore a tight tolerance hole. But that process can get complicated with a lot of guesswork involved. And every tool that I've used in the past was just like this one, where you had to use this dial and count the lines in order to adjust it. Well, it's 2022, and this tool has a secret weapon that makes counting lines a thing of the past. Well, today we're gonna remove all the guesswork from the boring process. And after you see this video, you'll never go back to a regular boring head again. So stick around as we show you how to build this entire tool assembly. Then we're gonna set the diameter and then get it in the machine and show you how to hit those tight tolerances. Well, here we are in the Heimer tool crib. And in order to hit those tight tolerances, we're gonna be using the Ebor Universal Boring Tool from Kinemetal. This body has a boring range from six to 152 millimeters. And what makes it universal is that you can fit different boring head styles depending on what diameter you're boring. If you're boring small diameters, then the body has this center hole, which you can fit with bar style boring heads. Then if you need to go even larger, you can mount a bridge to the body and then mount a cartridge and a counterweight to the bridge, which is what we're gonna do here today. Today. Another thing that makes this tool universal is the KM50 connection on the back side. The great thing about this adapter is that you can get it with most popular machine spindle interfaces, whether it be Cat40, Cat50, HSK, or Capto. Well, this is really nice if you work in a shop that has several different spindle adapters. But enough about that, let's start building this tool. So since this tool has through spindle coolant and we're gonna be using a bridge, we need to insert a coolant connector like this through this center hole, which is gonna seal the interface between the body and the bridge. We insert the coolant connector, then we're going to tighten the set screw. Now we need to mount the bridge. Notice on the other side of this bridge, this center hole is where the coolant comes in at. It's got this O-ring which is going to seal on this coolant connector. Insert it on the top and add our bolts. So now the bridge is tight we're going to install the insert holder and it's going to go on the side with the coolant port on it. We'll go ahead and put it on here and insert our screw but we won't tighten it up yet. So the bridge has some numbers scribed on it which is going to correspond to what diameter it's going to bore. We're pretty close to it. And the insert holder also has a line scribed on it as well. So what we're going to do is line up the line that's on the insert holder with the line just before the number 70, which is going to be like a 69 millimeter diameter bore. And we'll just go ahead and tighten our screw up. So to make sure our tool doesn't get out of balance, we're going to add a counterweight to the opposite side. And this counterweight also has a scribed line on it as well. And then we'll insert the screw and tighten it up as well. Now we'll go ahead and add the insert. Now we got the tool built, let's get it over to the Heimer Uno micro set to get the initial diameter set. We're gonna use our Heimer Uno to initially set the diameter of this boring tool. And let me just say, if your shop does not have a tool presetter, this is a great machine to introduce the technology to your shop. This is an extremely affordable machine that can save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. So let's get this tool set. All right, we got it set in our Cat 40 adapter. Now we're just gonna turn it to get it focused. Now we usually keep a piece of putty at the machine and what you wanna do before you measure the tool is you wanna dab the top of the insert because this is a super fine camera and it will pick up any piece of fuzz that's left on that tool. One really nice feature of this machine is the incident light. Once you press this, it changes the display so we can get a good detailed view of the insert or the end mill. This helps you spot chips or wear in your tool that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. Now another thing you'll notice is the machine has automatically measured the tool nose radius. This will give you another verification that you're using the correct insert or end mill. Now that it's found the diameter and the length, we can see that our diameter is 2.797, so we need to adjust that to 2.730. Now we're gonna take our Allen wrench, we're gonna loosen up the locking screw, and then we're gonna adjust the dial until we find our diameter. We're gonna loosen up the locking screw, like that, and then like that. Okay, now we got the diameter set to 2.73. The machine has automatically found our length of the tool. Now we're gonna press the printing button. We're gonna insert our tool number, which is tool 12. We'll press the screen again, and it will automatically print out our label. Now on this label, you can see that it's got our adapter called out, which is our Cat 40. It's got our tool number, it's got our diameter and our length. So one of the great things about having a tool presetter is if your machine is running one job, you can have your tool card over here, as many tools as you want for your next job. You could be teaching the link and sticking these labels on every tool. That way it's completely ready to go. When that job is complete, you roll it over, put all your tools in, and then just insert the number into your offsets. So now we got the tool set, it's time to put it in the machine and insert our offset. In our 
last video, we carried on with our 316 stainless part and our DVF 5000. We roughed and finished the profile. We come in and drilled out all the holes. Now we have a very tight tolerance in our large diameter bore. So we need to come in and bore that hole out. Now we're to the fun part. We got the tool in, we're ready to run it. And then we're gonna start adjusting it out to size. And that is where this tool really shines and stands out from the, all the other boring tools. That's the part I really can't wait to show you. So stick around to the end. If you're enjoying content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss videos just like this one. We've got our printout from our Heimer Uno. We're gonna input our tool length into the offset page. So we'll go to offset, find our tool number, scroll down to 12, 7.474, we're gonna input, and then we're gonna compare the number to make sure it's right. Looks good, now we're ready to run. The finish size for this bore is 2.750 plus or minus 210. So we're gonna take it in three equal passes. So we set the tool at 2.730 on our Heimer Uno. We just got done with our first pass. Now we're gonna check it with our dial bore gauge and see where we landed. So we're measuring at 2.730 and 1 tenth. So now we need to adjust 9,009 tenths to 2.740. And here's where it gets interesting. Here's our adjustment dial, just like you see on most boring tools. Each line represents a certain amount of movement. Kinemetals helped us out by etching what each line represents. So each line represents 0 0.002 millimeters. And a full turn represents 0.5 millimeters. So using this dial can actually introduce other challenges. For instance, if you're an elderly machinist like Barry, your eyesight may not be what it used to be and seeing these lines could get difficult. <laughs> but there's other issues as well, like somebody could distract you and you lose count or you turn it the wrong way and now you've introduced backlash into your tool. But look, it's 2022. It's time to introduce some technology into this tooling. That's exactly what Kinemetal did. So instead of using this dial, let me show you what we're gonna use instead. To make our adjustments with the eBoard, we're gonna use our digital display. On the body of the boring tool, you'll see the circuit board and the two slots. That's where the digital display will hook on. So we just pop it on and then turn it on. You'll see the numbers come up. If they don't say zero, just hold it and it is zero itself out. So now we're zeroed out, we can loosen up the locking screw and make our adjustment. You can see from just loosening the locking screw, it actually moved a little bit. You would not have caught that if you were just using the dial. Another thing I want to show you real quick is if I go the opposite way on this dial, now I go back and forth, you're seeing the backlash that's in the adjustment, but the digital display is not picking that up. It's going to know exactly how much that tool moves. So already, just by having a visual on your backlash, you see that this tool is a must have for your shop. So now we're going to adjust it out to 9,009 to that 2.740. There we are at 9,009 tenths. The digital display reads as a diameter, so we adjusted out the full 9,009 tenths. Now we're gonna lock our locking screw. So it's another thing, as you see, as we tighten the screw, we actually moved another tenth. That's super helpful and something you wouldn't have seen any other way. So we're gonna loosen that back up and adjust it back down. All right, now it's all tight. We're adjusted to the correct amount. Now we just pop the display off. We're ready to run this part again. So now we've run it a second time. Now we're gonna check it again and see where we're at. All right, we're at 2.7405, so we overcut by a half a thou. Now there's several reasons for that, and one of the main ones would be tool pressure. So the first cut may not have cut the exact amount of material that the second cut did. That's why I always like to do at least two finish passes. So now we're gonna adjust the tool by nine and a half thou, right to our finish size. Now one of the cool things about this digital display is when we pop it back on, we turn it on, you'll see that the amount of adjustment that 
that we moved it the first time is still there. That's gonna stay there until you clear it out again. So we're gonna press the on button again to clear it. Now we're at zero. Now we can loosen our locking screw and make our adjustment. So we need to adjust it 9,005 tenths. So I've moved it nine and four tenths because I anticipate like last time when I tighten this adjusting screw again, it's probably gonna move a little bit. All right, so we're at nine and a half, good to go. Now let's take our final pass. Just pop it off, we're good to go. So we've ran our final pass. As you can see, the eboard took us right to size. And I haven't even mentioned this incredible surface finish we're getting. I hope after this video you see why we are so excited to have this tool in our shop and why it is a must for yours. And real quick, I don't know if you know this, but we recently launched a new grinding academy at grindingacademy.com. And just like our other academies, the Grinding Academy is completely free. So make sure you check that out and take advantage of free education. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. We'll see y'all next time.